Welcome! In this video tutorial, I will be showing you the first steps in querying data from the web, with a special focus on cultural heritage data, like museum data. My name is Angela Driesen. I'm the Andrew W. Mann Librarian at Itati, the Harvard University Center for Italian Renaissance Studies, and the discipline representative for digital humanities at the Renaissance Society of America. In this tutorial, we will look at where to find and how to access museum data, considering various ways like data sets available on GitHub and data to be queried through an API or through a Sparkle endpoint. We will also look at first steps how to make these data more accessible for visualization and analysis with the tools OpenRefine and Palladio. Why would you need to query museum data? Querying data through an endpoint or a dataset allows you to access much more information than you would get through a museum online database. You are no longer looking at single objects, but you may ask questions like, give me objects exhibited in the year X, or show me objects of material Y made in the city and reason of Z, or show me objects acquired by the museum in the year X having the provenant Y, or also questions which are far more complicated. Querying data in this way is a first step into data mining. It allows you to address research questions that the public interface of a museum platform is not making possible. Cultural institutes have chosen different ways how to make their data publicly available. This table points only to a small selection of institutions. An API query is offered, for example, by the Harvard Art Museums, the Walters Art Museum and the Rex Museum. A Sparkle endpoint is offered by the Fondazione Zeri in Bologna, the Beni Culturali in Italy and the Europeana. A variety of museums have chosen to make their datasets available on GitHub, like the Museum of Modern Art, the Getty and the American Art Museum. Typical formats of datasets and query results are usually limited to four types. An API query often produces JSON or XML while the Sparkle query can produce either JSON, XML, CSV or TSV. Most common are CSV or JSON. While you are probably familiar with CSV, JSON needs some explanations. It is a lightweight data interchange format, which is commonly used because it is easy to read by other humans or machines. It belongs to the C programming language family and is ideal for data exchange. Let us first look at datasets on GitHub. GitHub is a development platform used by many cultural institutions to store datasets and to host and share codes for projects. Many bigger museums or other cultural heritage institutions store the data here in either one large file or in separate files under different entries. These datasets are updated periodically in order to give an up-to-date impression of the museum's holdings. Let us look at the provenance data of the Getty Museum in Los Angeles. This slide shows some of the data available for download from the Getty. The data format available for download is a CSV file, which you can read, but in order to get meaningful information out of this data, you would need to process this further. Therefore, I have modeled this data with a tool called OpenRefine and processed it for visualization with Palladio. Both OpenRefine and Palladio are tools free of charge to which we will come back later on. The result I am showing here is a network graph with cities and related auction houses and a timeline for acquisitions in the Getty in relation to the year. I will quickly show you how this works. 